Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. So today we're going to be going over the next section of bones here, which are the arm or the humerus, that's the one we're looking at now in this video. And then we're gonna be looking at the radius and the ulna, which are the bones of the forearm. And then we're gonna be looking at the bones in the hand, wrist and hand. So a bunch of little structures here, a bunch of little markings that we're gonna need to label. Uh, so this is just me playing through this video here and I'll play through it as we go through, but there I'm showing the ulna right now and there's the radius and now, Again, this is appendicular, so we gotta focus on what's left and what's right. So just starting from the beginning here, let's start with the humerus. Um, now it's not spelled the same way humerus is spelled as in funny, uh, so keep that in mind. If you are labeling something, it's not spelled the same way. Uh, so first here, we have the humerus, spelled like this. Uh, so now, how do you orient yourself with the humerus? How do you know what's left and what's right? First, easiest part here is to look at the head of the humerus. So right there we have the head of the humerus and it's right there on this one over here. So there's the head of the humerus. You know that's what's going into the glenohumeral joint towards the glenoid cavity on the scapula. So use that to orient yourself what's medial. Another thing you can use to orient yourself what's medial is I look at this epicondyle down here. This is the medial epicondyle. Remember, an epicondyle is a ridge or a, a bump above a condyle. So down here, we have some unique condyles that are found on the humerus for the radius and the ulna to articulate with. So here, there's the head, there's the medial. So we know this is the medial side. And then right here is the medial epicondyle on the other one. So over here, don't get confused. I have this one flipped. So when we're looking at this image right here, if we're looking at this humerus right here, this is the head, medial epicondyle in anatomical position, medial towards the midline. So this one would be the right humerus. Uh, so this one would be the right humerus over here. Um, if, let's see, everything's right, I don't flip it. Yep, that'd be the right. And over here, you gotta imagine flipping this one around, medial is then on the inside, this one would then be the left humerus. I might label some more stuff down there, so I might erase that then. So there you want to orient um, left and right. And you could do that just by two markings, by looking at the head and looking at the medial epicondyle. Now, how else can you figure out, uh, one thing I didn't talk about here, what's posterior and what's anterior. Biggest way to figure out what's posterior and anterior on a humerus is the posterior side has this deep pocket in the bottom, uh, and it's called the olecranon fossa. Here, I'll draw that right here, the olecranon fossa. So the olecranon fossa is where the ulna, so forming the hinge joint, think of your ulna moving like this, needs a deep groove to form that joint on the posterior side. So this is the posterior aspect right here. So I'll just write a P down here for posterior. And here you're looking at the anterior aspect for this one right here. Um, so you want to get that orientation in your mind when trying to figure this out. Um, now we have some other structures here I want to label two, a uh, big one being up here on the head. So if you have a head, you have a neck, typically. So if this is the head of the humerus, there are two uh, necks on the humerus in a way. There's an anatomical neck and a surgical neck. Uh, so right here, we have the anatomical neck. And then just below it, so there's like a little sulcus uh, that runs down through here um, on the other side, and it kind of separates us. And right here at the top, then, around this part here, we have then the surgical neck. So just two different neck definitions. I wouldn't try to trick you on that, just labeling on this so you have the labels. And then down here we have these little lines that come down. One connects to the medial epicondyle, one comes down here towards the capitulum. Uh, this is the lateral side, another thing you can look at. So there's also a lateral epicondyle down here, which I'm not going to label. You kind of see the little bump right there. So right there we can label that lateral epicondyle. And I know there's a whole bunch of stuff down in here that I want to label that because I do zoom in there in the video later then. Uh, and then this is called the lateral, this is a long one to write, lateral supra, so it's above, condyler, so it's above the condyles <laughs> ridge. So we have a lateral supracondylar ridge and a medial supracondylar ridge, or I'm just going to write MSG not monosodium glutarate, uh, MSR. Geez, I can't, I'm, 
getting tongue tied and word tied. Uh, so the medial supracondylar ridge. <laughs> there we go. See, we all get a little twisted in the brain sometimes. Uh, and then another thing I wanted to label on this are these little tubercles at the top. So right here, this is the greater tubercle. Now, something we can't see on this one is the lesser, but we can see it over here. So right here would be the greater tubercle again. I'll just write GT there. Then right here, there's a little groove or basin that goes down through here. This is actually called the intertubercular sulcus. So intertubercular sulcus. Uh, and then over here on the other side of the intertubercular sulcus, so it's between two tuber tubercles, so there's a groove between two tubercles. This one is then the, so that's the greater tubercle. This one then is appropriately named the lesser tubercle. Oop. Sorry about my handwriting there. Another thing I wanted to point out on this picture right here is there's, there's this little rough area right here. This is actually called the deltoid tuberosity. So a tuberosity is a large, round, uh, roughened projection. And this is actually where the deltoid muscle attaches. Now, on the other side here, you can't really see it right here. So this would be the deltoid tuberosity over here. Then on the middle here, there's the radial groove. And we can see it. I'll show it when we look at Captain Jack. Um, actually, radial groove, you kind of see it right here a little bit too. So uh, I'll just label that right here. Um, so that radial groove, deltoid tuberosity, a lot of different parts to label on this. And we're not even done. I want to zoom in on the bottom down here. So I'm going to clear this for a second. Uh, and then let's move ahead and look at the actual joint. So here I move down each one. And here you can see that deep olecranon fossa. Uh, there's the medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. And now there's an important uh, joint right there too. And I kind of show it on this one. So there I flip this bone. And there you can see the olecranon fossa. And over here you can see Oop, and I go to the ulna. So there's the olecranon fossa. And that joint right there is called the trochlea. And I wish this wasn't so white balanced. So we can label it, though. Um, so right here, this joint, this is called the trochlea. And it's kind of like an hourglass look to it. And that's where the, so this bone right here is the ulna. You can get that by this U shape in the hinge joint right here. Then this is the radius. And the radius articulates right here, this rounded area. This is called the capitulum. Now on this, there's a, it's hard to see here, but you just have to uh, trust me on this. There's a, a radial fossa right here, a little uh, shallow like depression. And then up here, so now on the ulna, there's two main parts at the top of the ulna here. So this is the trochlear notch on the ulna. Probably sh shouldn't label all these yet, but this is the trochlear notch. So that's what goes into the trochlea. Uh, remember, the fossa on the posterior side here is called the olecranon fossa. This is called the olecranon process. Olecranon process. This one, there's a little, so you can't see it here, but it goes like that, little process that comes up right there as well. It's called the coronoid process. So if the olecranon process goes into the uh, olecranon fossa, the coronoid process goes into the Hard to see, it's in all that white in there, but it's a little shallow groove, the coronoid fossa. So there, labeling all the parts of this um, hinge joint for our elbow joint. And there's also a little joint between the radius and the ulna there as well. So just looking, making sure I labeled everything on the humerus, I think we got it all. Alrighty, let's continue down the radius in the ulna now. So here, remember, the ulna has that U-shape in it, and that's one way you want to remember it. Now, one thing you want to focus on is when we are in anatomical position, what is lateral and what is medial for the radius and the ulna? And this will help you orient them left and right with each other as well. So your thumb in anatomical position is always lateral. Pinky is medial. Pinky is the ulna side. Radius is then the lateral side. So in anatomical position, the radius is lateral or pointing towards the outside. And that's an important thing to remember here when looking at this and trying to orient left and right. So here, uh, sh again, showing different parts up here, this would be the head of the radius. This would be the neck of the radius right here. And one other unique part on this radius is this little bump right here. This is called the radial, I'm not gonna, I, I can label it here. Let's label it, it's an important one. This is called the radial 
tuberosity. Again, tuberosity is a large, rounded, roughened projection. So the radial tuberosity is also pointing which direction? Anteriorly. So anterior, if it's pointing anterior, it's the one pointing that way. So it tells, or towards the front, not that way. Uh, we gotta speak in science here. Uh, so the one uh, towards the front. So it tells you the orientation just at the top by look, finding that radial tuberosity and seeing that bump there. The other, the posterior side does not have that. So then as we move down uh, through the bones here, now these two bones are also connected by a membrane in between called the interosseous membrane interbone membrane, kind of makes sense. And at the bottom, we have a few unique structures as well. Let's pause it right there. We should be able to label that now. Know that, note that these are pretty separated, and I did that on purpose so we can label the different structures. So here's the ulna coming down. Ulna has a very thin end to it. And if you're trying to figure out the ends of the radius, so the head of the radius has that a round and cup-like um, condyle on it that it articulates with that capitulum. So main big difference, and there's a little pointed end down here. This is called the radial styloid process. Radial styloid, like a stylus, like my pen here, the radial styloid process. And then there's another one right over here. This one's on the ulna. This one's called the ulnar styloid process. And you want to use them to help orient, to figure out what's left, what's right, because they're to the outsides. Well, one's medial, uh, so this one here would be medial, and this one would be lateral, and it helps you with your orientation. And, you, and think about that when they go together, they form a little pocket. They form a little uh, U, and that's your wrist pocket. And you can feel these little styloid processes right there on your wrist, if you touch your wrist right now, too. Those little bumps in your wrist are these little styloid processes. Uh, then right here we have this little notch. This is called the ulnar notch of the radius. So I'm just going to write ulnar notch. So that's where the ulna goes. So the ulna sticks in there and then it forms a, so there's a proximal and a distal radial ulnar joint. And think about that, they're like little pivot joints. The ulna, when you go, pro, when you protonate and supinate your forearm, your ulna stays in place. Your radius rotates over your ulna and twists when you make this action. Uh, and that's because they rotate around these proximal and distal radial ulnar joints. Uh, but these are the uh, most important parts I labeled on the radius and the ulna, um, just to help you identify what's left and what's right. Um, that's the important part here. Uh, so if you're looking at this one, if this is the lateral side, trying to figure out what's left and what's right, this one should be the right side. Alrighty, now, moving forward, so there, oh yeah, I want to look at the anterior, I mean the posterior side of this as well, and that's this one over here. So there you can see the connection, you don't see that uh, tuberosity on this one right here for the radius, and here the radius has that cup-like top to it, you can see the connection, um, and then there's the ulna, and then it goes down, and there you can see how it forms. If I there, Here I turned it the wrong way on purpose. You see how it no longer has that cup shape between the styloid processes? Yep, that's important. Uh, so there, when I turn it back, it then goes in there in that radial notch, or the ulnar notch on the radius, and there you can get that little, that little U. That little U is then your wrist joint, which we'll go into next. And now I do show this on uh, Captain Jack here. Uh, so this showing a humerus, uh, and the radius and the ulna connected here. Now, it's not not a beautiful uh, orientation. You know, Captain Jack has been through some things. Um, and if you haven't met Captain Jack yet, remember, Dr. Captain Jack Marrow is my personal skeleton. Uh, so he's a good guinea pig here for our studies. But here you can see on the anterior side, there's a nice uh, indication of that radial tuberosity. And don't forget, we also have the humerus up here. Um, there's the greater tubercle and the humerus, head of the humerus, we come down. The, here's the medial epicondyle, it's a very unique feature. And then we also look at the back side here, which is where I want to go to next. And here we can see that olecranon fossa where the ulna sits in that, so this is a hinge joint. I know we haven't talked about joints yet, but there's a hinge joint. Then up here on this side you can also see um, the radial groove coming down through here. Uh, so yeah, those are the main ones of the arm and forearm, and now we got to go to the wrist. This is everyone's favorite. A uh, whole bunch of little bones in the wrist. So, 
Let's start with them. So these are, all these bones down here are all called the carpals. Uh, so here, well, well, I'll write carpals in as well. But right now I want to try to figure out how can we re remember all of these. They all have unique names. Uh, so here, T, L, and then S. First ones are TLS. Now there are two T's up here too. These ones then are H. These two are T. And this one is a C. It's just the letters they start with. So the you got to remember the T's if you're writing. So TLS, HC, HCTT, if you're trying to remember a little mnemonics to remember this. Uh, and then right here, just an orientation right here is the thumb. And this is, think anatomical position. This is the posterior side as well. So this is the posterior side of the wrist. So we're looking at it from this direction. And that can confuse a lot of people. You think anterior side of the wrist, you're thinking the top. But no, we're talking posterior, which is the top right here. And this is the thumb pointing backwards. So if you're thinking about this, this would be the right wrist. Uh, so down here we have all the carpals or all this region in here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carpals. Now let's write them out. So the T here is the triquetrum. The L is the lunate. The S is the larger one here if you're trying to orient yourself. So it's a little bigger here. This one's called the scaphoid. So these ones are then forming that wrist joint. And now we have H, C, T, T. H is the hamate. Fun one. C, the capitate. So the capitate. And now you have the ones that this, you got to figure out a way to remember them. We have the first T here, the one that's more internal. This is the trapezoid, like the shape. And then the other one, trapezius, <laughs> or trapezium. So those ones, you just have to kind of remember them. I guess trapezium and trapezoid, almost all the letters are the same except for the last three. <laughs> so sorry on that one. And the M doesn't even work for medial, sorry. But these are all the carpals. And then in this region right here, these ones are the metacarpals. So we have thumb starts as one, two, three, four, and five. So when you're talking about the metacarpals, if you say metacarpal three, I know which part, which one you're talking about. There are, you know, some main parts of the uh, metacarpals. They have a, a head, a shaft, and I can't fit it anywhere, but there is a base down here as well. So head, shaft, and base. So those are the metacarpals. Then we have the phalanges. The phalanges is your main fingers. So there are three phalanges. There's a middle, a uh, distal, middle, and proximal. Uh, so I won't write those. So we have distal, middle, and proximal. So just saying where they are. There is one unique one here. So there's only two phalanges for the thumb. Uh, and then down here underneath there on the uh, anterior side, there are two sesamoid bones as well. Um, so here are two phalanges on the thumb. So if you're saying phalange two, you know, like, two, and then the middle phalange, you'd be talking about that one right there for the pointer finger. Uh, so yes, the, the wrist can be confusing, but if you just break down and make up your own TLS, HCTT mnemonic and know which angle you made that mnemonic from, it's not as bad as it sounds. But that is all I have for this video today. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, so here we'll just play through it one more time here. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, next video, we're going to be going over the pelvis, and then we'll be going over the thigh, leg, and foot. We're almost there, almost done, and then we're through the skeletal system. But with that, I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.